What's going on, people? Welcome to the Opposition Preview. I'm joined by Sam from Back of the Net. Yes, it gets confusing at times, but Back of the Net, the Bournemouth podcast. Um, as always, we're going to be talking about the big game. It's a big game for Palace. Um, it can pretty much confirm our survival hopes and also for Bournemouth. Are they going for Europe and more? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Get involved with the chat as always. Sam. First of all, how have you been? Last time we faced you, it feels like a while ago. I tried to ignore the game because last mm. time we faced you, the fans were singing, you're not fit to wear the shirt. That's how bad it was. <laughs> but how you been? Yeah, been very good. It's been um, it's been a good time supporting Bournemouth on the whole this season. We've had little blips. Start of the season was, was pretty tough as we were getting used to our new manager, new style of football. January wasn't particularly great for us, but we've had some really good runs, really good run in November and December. And we're on one right now we're playing teams in and around us we're picking up points and everyone's happy it's a bit weird though because usually there's something riding on the season Mm. uh like we're we're flirting with relegation we're relegated we're promoted this time nothing this is what mid table's like but you know what i'll take it we're bournemouth i'll take it imagine feeling like that for 10 years um, that's what it feels like <laughs> that <must> be <laughs> now you know how it feels like to be a Palace fan I know we do flirt with relegation here and there but come this time of the season our season's ended like this is how it feels like to be a Palace fan every single year but um, let's just talk about your season overall as you as you said at the start of the season very slow then you picked up um, you know getting wins um, some big wins as well but I'll be honest as a Palace fan looking at the league table and not watching Bournemouth every other week it feels weird seeing you only 13th. I mean, are you happy with how the season has gone? Of course, you're under a new manager as well, but I would have thought that you'd be higher up the table based on a lot of hype around your manager as well. And rightly so, because he's been very good for you. I think I think recently that we've we started to click towards the end of the year with some brilliant results. You sort of mentioned our good run. It sort of culminated with beating Manchester United on their own uh, turf 3-0, which was a superb result. That's a, mm. almost a historical result for our club. But yeah, I think because we've seen the style of football that we can do, now you're looking at the points total thinking it's a little bit underwhelming. But the thing is, we had to learn that style. So we almost as good as wrote off the first seven or eight games because they were playing football yeah. under Gary O'Neill. He's, by the way, fantastic job he's doing at Wolves. But yeah. it didn't quite fit what the board at AFC Bournemouth wanted to do. So the players that we had needed to play a different style. So once we got used to that, then it did start to click. And now that we're now that we're playing in that particular way and we know what we're doing, I think I'd probably be underwhelmed if we had another season like this where we were on the same amount of points. I mean, don't get me wrong, 38 points is great for a club our size, but I, I don't know. I just feel as though we, you know, we could be pushing sort of towards the 50 point mark um, at this point in the season. Who knows? But um, yeah, it's, um, it is a pretty weird one, but I think most Bournemouth fans are, relatively happy with with where we're at we you know could be a couple of places higher you always look at individual games that you you know have regrets of etc but no on the whole we're all right so when you look at this season to the end of the season there isn't that many games left after Mm -hmm. our game up is going to be only eight games remaining do you still have the hope of maybe pushing for europe it's not that far ahead of you but you do have to get results i don't know how your fixture list looks like after palace but is there still that hope maybe we can or not? Or are you just writing it's off just, the season? It's just it's just so weird when other fans put Bournemouth and Europe in the same sentence. That never happens. It's, it, it's odd. But you know what? I think uh, perhaps up until the last game we played, we were still in relegation conversations with some people. I don't think but your people were really taking it seriously. But, you know, you could say that Bournemouth could get dragged in. But I think after our last win at the weekend over Everton, I think now you can safely say we're all right. So, you know, judging by the fact that you, a couple of weeks ago we were in some relegation conversations, we have to be in European conversations because the gap between us and Europe is less than what it is between us yeah. and the relegation zone. So, um, look, I, ju- I just think for us, a good season will be beating our our best seven points tally, which is 46 points under Eddie Howe in our second Premier League season. Mm. Um, that season, we finished ninth. No way would that mean ninth now. It'd probably be about 11th or something or 12th. Mm. Um, so just beating that, I think, would be good. But look, if we, if we keep on winning games and there are winnable games ahead, then who knows? But I, I mean, our owner's got a plan of like four or five years of trying to get us into Europe. If that happens, great. But 
can't imagine it'll happen this season. But whilst there's hope, we'll still believe. Yeah, well, look, our owner, um, oh, well, yeah, our chairman right now, he, he said something uh, crazy about probably about 10, not 10 years, probably eight years ago, seven years ago. You never know. Maybe in 10 years, Crystal Palace could be playing yeah. European football. Or I think he said something about pushing for the title. But, you know, here we are. We're still, we're still fighting for 12, 13 every single season. <laughs> yeah. so we'll see if your owners live up to their words. Um, but when you um, look at your last four games, um, wins against Everton, Luton, and Burnley, I think, look, these are games that you expect... Bournemouth to be winning based mm. on how you played so far this season in terms of the ups and the draw against Sheffield United was a bit of a surprise mm. um, I want to talk about your manager Ariola, because yeah. you mentioned about Europe and of course that's the that's the aim for a lot of clubs like Bournemouth, like Palace mm. that you want to fit the European spots. Do you think that you can do it under him? Based on the strengths and the weaknesses because you have had some downs under him as well. Do you think yeah. that overall he has that package to get you into European sports? Is he going to be that long-term project manager or do you want to see a bit more before you make that um say? Yeah, uh, my fear with Iriola is that every club he's been to, he's always ever had sh short-term contracts on to sort of two years or so. But I think he wants to make headway in the Premier League, so he'll probably stay with the Cherries for a little bit longer. I I think we've got a good chance under him because the brand of football that we play um, is getting us more points. We've conceded fewer goals than what we did under Gary O'Neill already. We've scored more already than what we did. And, you know, Gary O'Neill, ironically, the manager that we got rid of is actually doing incredibly well with Wolves yeah, and they're pushing for winning. European spots. And, <laughs> yeah, and they're, they're probably more likely. But then the quality of the squad that they've got is a lot better and they spent a fortune on some real world-class players. I think they've got some really excellent like pedigree within their side. But I don't know. I do feel as though Ariola's got experience of um, you know, pushing his teams. I think that's why they we went for you know Ariola, because he sort of uh he manages the underdog sides and manages to take them far in the league campaigns. He, you know, he's reached a couple of cup semi-finals, you know, Copa del Rey, etc., with the smaller clubs that he was at. And he he has got pedigree for it. Um I think I think the style that we play, yeah, I I think we could push for Europe under him. It may not happen this season, but as long as the board back him as well with signings, then it could happen. My fear, of course, is is losing players because I think now that I'm not saying we're entering that kind of um, the Brighton and you wouldn't want me to like. To, like, I don't know. Brighton, Brighton. It's actually weird. Do you do you like Brighton? How does Bournemouth and Brighton work? Like the rivalry, like. Are you? You don't really care. No, really. I mean, you know, there was a time where um we would all take the piss by wearing uh, Tesco plastic bags with their sort of <laughs> yeah. uh, white and blue stripes. Uh, at some point, I think it was weirdly more of a rivalry when we were you know down the leagues, yeah. um, but not so much now. I think but Bournemouth haven't really got their rivals as such. I think we say that Saints are our rivals. Uh, they don't consider us their rivals. They consider Portsmouth their rivals. But in, in terms of the Premier League, you, you've sort of got a few different brackets. Obviously, you've got, you know, like Manchester City and Liverpool. And you could say Arsenal are up there, but I think Man City, Liverpool. And then after that, you've got Arsenal, Tottenham, etc. Um, yeah. And then you've got another bracket of teams like Newcastle, Aston Villa. A Brighton push in? Maybe. Mm -hmm. But Bournemouth, I think, are maybe just beneath that, I think. Um, so, look, I don't... I think that, um, you know, trying to be the next Brighton is probably our aim. And if we can be something like that, I think, you know, uh, most Bournemouth fans would be happy. But like I said, being Brighton means you sell a lot of your stars and it means you have to have a good uh, director of football and rec a good recruitment team to be able to cope with when your big stars leave. Now, I'm w I'm worried this season that we'll have a few leaving. Dom Solanke is going to be huge for us. Our style is absolutely you know pivotal to having him in the side as well. Ilya Zabani, the centre-back, highly rated. Milos Kirk as the left-back as well. I think we will lose a, f a few. So it's going to be um, it's going to be tough for the new director of football because our existing one is going to Liverpool, Richard Hughes. So Simon Francis is his understudy. Okay. He's got the pressure on him to deliver. So yeah, it could could be a shaky season next season for Bournemouth. I don't think we'll get relegated, but um, yeah, there's certainly all eyes will be on. Be better, you maybe. never know. You never know. Like it could be worse. It could, maybe it could be better. Well, I think that the funny thing is a lot of clubs are trying to do that model of you know buying these players for cheap. Uh, developing them in the Premier League and selling them on for a higher value. Look, Palace, yeah. we have a few players that we're worried about, but then again, so far, 
in terms of the actual recruitment, we've been fine. Like Dougie Friedman has yeah. found all these players and he's still finding them. Adam Walton's another one we signed and he looks absolutely fantastic. Yeah, true. Um, he's about replacing them, which we haven't experienced yet. We haven't experienced the replacing part yet. But then again, as long as Dougie Friedman stays, as long as he can find these gems, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Like, look, we see it with points deductions. Like now with the financial position of, of some of these clubs and l- you look at your stadium, for example, a lot of people laugh about it, even Paris Stadium, the <laughs> revenue and all of that, it matters now. So mm. uh, up until you extend your stadium and your facilities, improve them, it's going to be a bit hard. I- I'm thinking yeah. how are clubs like Bournemouth going to be able to compete with the clubs at the top? Because now it just feels like you can't really uh, play with the rules. Like it seems like it's all of a sudden gone very strict. Yeah, I, I think our, our key has been signing relatively unknown uh, talents from from Europe, which we we never sort of did before. I think what this um, managerial change has, has brought for AFC Bournemouth is, you know, under Eddie, when we were in the Premier League with him, um, we were very British focused. We would focus mainly British players or young championship players. And whilst we're still doing that now, we're looking to the continent a lot more because that's what Iriola you know, really favours. And we're signing these sort of prospects that, you know, maybe for, I don't know, like 10 million or so that, you know, all they have to do is walk out onto a Premier League pitch and they've almost doubled their value, Um, especially if they perform. And thankfully, most of ours have. So, yeah, in in terms of, you know, financial fair play, we're, you know, we're doing all right because, you know, we know that we could sell our assets uh, like tomorrow and be making money on them. But uh, yeah, really interesting that kind of the challenges that the smaller clubs in the Premier League certainly have got. And it's, um, you know, the so-called bigger clubs that are making the failures each and every time, which is mental. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, quickly, just let's get your thoughts on Palace. Um, mm. <laughs> look, we, we've been on shows together on uh, 12 Man Podcast, um, just talking about everything Premier League related. I've... I basically hated the season. Um, yeah. I think under Roy, it was it was very toxic more than anything, more than the football results. It was just toxic with the fan base. As I said, when we last faced you, the um, the fans were chanting that you're not fit to wear the shirt to the players. That's how bad it was. Uh, but look, we've got a new manager, Oliver Glasner. Um, what have you made of us? I, I'm not expecting you to watch every single Pirates game, but just based on the Glasner uh, appointment and what's been happening so far, do you understand our pain now of just finishing and ending our season basically late March and having the same thing year on year on? Yeah, I think I think we, we when I say we, I mean uh, you know me, you, Brentford, Fulham, teams like that. We've been lucky that there have been two awful teams in the Premier League this year, yeah. and then uh, you know a few others that are going to be in and around it as well. So I'm talking like uh, uh, Luton, um, and Nottingham Forest, etc you know possibly Everton as well depending on what yeah. happens with points as well we've been fortunate in that regard so really yes I mean f- for us it doesn't feel like we've been overly tested yet and it hasn't felt like a battle but I don't know with with Palace I mean under Roy it 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 wasn't good to watch um we we came to your place and whilst we were in relatively good form we we knew it's a uh, you know, like a nasty place to come, like very tough to get a result. But we were surprised. It felt like the atmosphere was very resigned. It's usually absolutely banging at Selhurst yeah, Park and it wasn't. It was. And I know that, you know, the kind of how the game pans out will determine how loud things are. We did score relatively early in that. There was, a, I think, halfway through the first half. But I don't know, there was almost a, a sort of despondency within the fan base a little bit. And none of the kind of, you know, the bite that you tend to usually see from matches in uh, when you were playing in South London. I think since then, the sort of change that's been almost forced upon them, I've been really interested to see sort of how it's panning out. And you've got some results that have probably been expected of you, I suppose. For instance, the, you know, the 3-0 against Burnley. you got... You got a point at Everton, which I think is, you know, depending on which Everton turns up, it it can be fairly respectable. Won't talk about the game at the Amex that you had, but then recently I've been watching the sort of, you know, the one all at Forest at the weekend. Mm. Um, oh, I, you know, I suppose for a Palace fan, you know, it must be frustrating. But then the draw at home to Luton, I mean, last minute goals. That's that's been a problem though. It, it well, a lot, yeah, it was, a lot. it was actually solid performance. Like the Luton game was actually solid performance, and in a way, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's exactly like the Forest game, but we did create chances in a loop yeah. game and it was on us to not finish them. So there have been improvements in that regard in terms of the actual performances, but in terms of results, when you look at it like that, yeah, I understand where you're coming from. Like, you, but, you but if there are, 
if there are tweaks in like the playing style, if things are being you know yeah. changed on the pitch, you can appreciate the fact that it is going to take time. And I can I can see why you know it, uh, the Eagles fans are, are just thinking, you know what, let's just get the season done. Mm. Um, you know, I'm 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 kind of hoping for you that there'll be that kind of eureka moment, like you know, for the manager where everything clicks and you get a really good you know performance. Uh, you know, maybe a big team. You think, oh, you know what, this is what we can expect. But mm. I haven't really seen it so far. Um, but I, you know, I don't think, or, you know, like all is lost, but like I say, you, we're just fortunate that there are some real bad teams in the Premier League exactly. this year. So we're yeah, all right. Exactly. Yeah, that's why, that's why we're fine. But um, when you talk about confidence then, are you more confident going into this game or the same amount as, as it was against Roy or on the Glasner? Um, look, if you don't, if you haven't watched Paddy, just quickly, heads up, five yeah. at the back. Um, gonna be a free when we're in possession. Um, mm. counter attacking football, fast football, direct. Um, so based on what you've seen, the results, mm. are you how how are you feeling? Are you you know, have you got that optimism that you can get three um, points? I'm optimistic based on our form at the moment. I think our you know, our form has pretty been pretty good, and for us. It, it doesn't matter if we're three 0 down at half time, as as shown against Luton, because you know we'll come mm. back and we'll score. And he sent he he tends to send a rocket up him at half time when it needs it, and you know those team talks or whatever he does, the little tactical tweaks that he makes certainly has their effect. I think I'm I'm probably a little bit more pessimistic playing your new gaffer as I was under Roy. So I think we we sort of you know, knew how to combat him. I think in some ways this will be a little bit unknown for us, but I think the actual mm. confidence within the team and the mem- the momentum that we've got uh, from the games that we've had recently, I mean, in the form table at the moment, we're sixth in the last six, using the last six games as a gauge, we're sixth. Palace are 14th, only one win in their last six. Mm. We've um, got three wins in the last six and a couple of draws in there as well. So yeah, we're doing all right. And I, I don't know what, I just feel as though we've got some momentum and sometimes it's just muscle memory and you just do the same thing again and you get points. I'm sure it won't last forever, of course, and maybe this will, this will be the game where we come unstuck. But I don't know. There's there's not really any pressure on you, really. Yeah, there us. isn't, really. I think we pretty much Mate, stayed up. I, I think some fans want another win or another point, depending on who you ask. But mm. I think we're pretty much confident. Then again, now is the perfect time. I'm not saying in this game, but... yeah. But the end of the season to experiment to to see what players that Glasner like. So this is basically you can see it as an extended preseason to preseason. So you can yeah, big time all the stuff in the summer. Um, that's so a positive. I, th- I do think it's going to be an interesting game. I think you know your style of football. You know how you've been explaining it there sort of mirrors our own. You're very counter attacking. So you know it could be end to end stuff. Mm. I would I would like to think that we could scrape over the line in this one. It doesn't matter if we don't really. And I'm I, and I'm going into these games weirdly like it doesn't matter. If we win or lose, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, really, that, really. That's just a weird yeah. thing. And it's, it's a horrible feeling to turn up and, you know, not really care whether your team wins or loses. It's mad. Yeah, well, that's that's a Paddy fan. That's what we do. <laughs> uh, so that's what we do. But um, look, if you do win this game, I think you probably start caring a bit more. Cause yeah, that's true. That far off, you know, ninth or eighth, and it gives you that optimism. So let's get your score predictions. You did say that you do think that you might, you know, you could get a result. How do you yeah. see it going? I think I I think well firstly, like the eleventh the eleven thousand what a massive crowd. The eleven thousand people are gonna be absolutely loving seeing Jefferson Lerma back. First time he's been back oh, in yeah, the ball. Because yeah. obviously we we absolutely love him. I chat to one of his mates um called Harold, who's still down here in Bournemouth, and he's an avid Bournemouth fan. And I see him every so often. And um I on our vlog, um I bumped into him for our last game against Everton so he's on there but top man he speaks to Jeff all the time um, he says he does miss it down down here but he's happy at Palace which is you know good and bad yeah. to hear but um, we're going to be all loving seeing Jefferson Lerma and singing his name uh, that said that said I think he might go home a little bit unhappy I'm hoping with a 2-1 Bournemouth win again that's what I'm hoping anyway 2-1 Bournemouth win okay yeah. okay what if Lerma scores a winner would you still love him if he's a one nil? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? We still well, like when we um, you know, at your place, we we obviously went one nil up. I think mm. uh, Sanessi scored, and then start of the second half, Palace came out fighting, and then he he struck a, he struck a shot from about twenty five yards. It hit the outside of the post. We were like, oh, yeah, yeah. because he never <laughs> usually scores, but if he do, like usually they're absolutely banging goals. But um, 
you know what, we would still love him anyway because he put in an absolute shift for us you know, with the, the, and yeah. the ultimate professional. So, yeah, we love him. Yeah, 100%. We love him as well. I, I've met him um, once as well. He's a great guy. Um, I understand why um, wherever he goes, it seems like the, the love is there for him. But I'm going to go for one all. Um, yeah. I don't see... We could win the game. We could easily lose it as well. But if I'm being realistic, I don't think we'll keep a clean sheet. But if we do create the chances that we created against Forest, we could, you know, score a goal and hopefully score another one. Yeah, it could go both ways, but I'm going to go for one all. I'll be happy with a one all. But look, uh, people, if you have enjoyed this, first of all, make sure to check out Back of the Net. The link will be in the description down below um, where you can check out great boom of content over there. Um, so make sure to do that. And also um, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below and your score predictions ahead of the game. That's it from me and Sam. And until next time, up the pack.